Beautiful people, welcome to our next Epiphany Poker Podcast guest making a debut. We have Anna Marquez. Uh, Anna and I, is, it's the first time that we're speaking and uh, it's the first time that we're meeting. So I love this feeling of like, I, I know who you are and I've seen you in the poker worlds. You were there before I was there, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, uh, yeah you'll probably be there after I've been there as well. Uh, you see, you seem like you're a staple part of the poker world, but I, we just haven't talked. So there's like all of this mystery around getting to meet someone from <laughs> so I fucking love that. Do you want to, do you want to just give like a brief elevator introduction of who you are and what your, what your story is in poker? Yeah. I mean, I've been playing 15 years plus and yeah, <laughs> I'm getting old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and uh, tourney pro uh, i started with a little bit of cash but mostly tournaments and i don't know just uh, making it here for a long time <laughs> yeah and you got you got around two million in live caches i did my mm -hmm. very quick brief research before this <laughs> and it it the the pinnacle was you got a third place of 450k or something yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah i've yeah. been i've been chasing that million dollar scores for a long time and i don't get it <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, here's here's what you should have done you should have got in and instantly got stupidly lucky and then uh and then ro rode that rode that way for a few years <laughs> that was, uh... yeah that, that would have been fun but maybe it doesn't make me the person i am today and i like the person mm. i am today so yeah no that <laughs> it, it definitely early success can make people pretty soft yeah um, uh, yeah. So yeah, I, I feel like, do, you, do you feel like all of those years of experience when you reach that final table and you got third place at 450k do you feel like it all accumulated into that point did you handle mm. it like a pro or did the nerves still kick in no I mean I was I was pretty chill I was pretty chill um I mean I've had a lot of final tables I've had a lot of second places I've had a lot of bubbles and I don't know, and I've been playing ten k for a long time, so it didn't. It 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 was just like another final table. Like actually, when I passed it, I was so, you know, like there again. Like then the, then the money kicked in, but, <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. man, yeah. So, but but yeah, I mean, you you accum accumulate experience, you know. So obviously, like every time you get hit a score, that experience has been, uh, like helping to get there. Yeah, you know, for, for me, it's it's kind of like that. But in a way, it was also in reverse. And may, maybe it's different for you. But when I first got into poker, I was so emotionless as a person. Yeah. Like I, I'd had a really difficult childhood and all of my emotions just shut off. And I think it's the same mm -hmm. for a lot of a lot of people out there in poker. So when I when I was on my first like first ever 25k I played, I, I won it and I was on the final table. And it was like, Top, top prize is like 3x my net worth, you know, something like that. And I was just <laughs> giggling, had no idea. Like, I just didn't, didn't care because I didn't feel anything. Yeah. And then as I grew up and healed myself and opened my emotions, it actually in some ways got easier, but in some ways it got a lot harder because now I actually have to fucking sit and face up. Oh my God, I'm scared of something. I'm <laughs> worthy or whatever it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite the opposite. I'm mega emotional, like super yeah. emotional. I cry yeah. everywhere. Like I Me get too like, now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm actually doing the reverse. Like actually meditation is helping me to like keep my emotions like calm, you know? And like, for example, like I, I, I have a lot of heads up running this week. And like one of the toughest things about heads up is like the emotions, you know, it's like so many yeah, emotions, yeah, like yeah, constantly, yeah. constantly, constantly. And, and it's your personal goal. as well when it's heads up. Yeah, there's ego. There's ego for sure. <laughs> there's ego. Yeah. It's, so, it's so tough to shut down the ego. <laughs> and then like so many hands being played. It's like, well, it's super intense. Super intense. What, what, so what, what is this heads up challenge? You, I, you already briefly mentioned this. I don't actually know what it is. The, the heads up. Uh, so... Um, First, uh, I have uh, running the PPM, which is the Poker Pro Masters. Uh, it's um, it's a, a challenge of like all the recs in Spain, all the top recs. Like we get voted by the public. Uh, we also vote ourselves. And then we play all against each other for like some kind of package or something like that. What do you, what uh, do you, mean? What do you mean you vote? Well, uh, the pub the public votes us. Like, uh, I don't know how, how do we how do we get elected? I think it's by the public. Like, the public says like you gotta vote like I don't know x amount of people. Then whoever comes like um, it's on the final or something like that. Then the people that were voted last year and play last year also get to vote. 
So, and then there's also some kind of satellites running or something like that. So it's um, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting a feel. So some kind of competition, Spaniard yeah. against Spaniard, you versus yes. Adrian Mateos or Sergio or whoever it is. Yeah, yes, and, yes, exactly. Uh, top, top prize equals? It depends. Like last year was a platinum pass. Uh, this year, I think they give us like uh, a couple main events. It changes, it changes. So. It's just it, but it's like it's a pure ego competition, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like all oh, the Spaniards yeah. play it against each other. I, it's pretty fun. It's pretty Spaniards fun. are tough at, at poker, by the way. I don't, I don't know if you have any insight into this, but as I worked my way through the poker worlds and I got to the top, I realized there were camps of people. You know, we, we you uh -huh. had Germans crushes. You had a few Russians. They were kind of mysterious. Didn't really know what was going on with them. And then you had a lot of Spaniards. Yes. And you guys were tough. Like you had Adrian Mateo, Sergio, whatever his name is. And there was like a specific style that came with being a Spanish person, maybe like five years ago. And it was very aggressive, like <laughs> very, very <laughs> aggressive. Do you, do you, do you, under, do you know more about the, the Spanish poker culture and why that is? Well, I, I don't know exactly. I know, I know there's a lot of, um, <laughs> there's a lot of poker schools in Spain. So, and a lot of people come from the poker school. And then I guess like, I guess maybe like the groups get together and like we, they all learn the same style or something yeah, like that. I don't yeah. know. Or, or that, maybe that, that's what I, that's what I felt because they they seem to always like be so so friendly with each other. They seem to have really similar play styles. All very yeah. very good. Yeah. Who 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 did you grow up with? Like who who were your poker partners in the? In the world? I, at the beginning, uh, it was the Americans uh, because I went to school in Washington D.C. and actually that's when I started when I started playing poker. So at the beginning, I was an, an American wreck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you were like weak, passive, or <laughs> basically. <laughs> then, that was an it. <laughs> then, then I then I moved to Europe and I became friends with the Germans, and actually they've been like my co my community for the longest. Uh, the Germans, and, and now I'm re now I'm actually hanging out more with the Spaniards. So <laughs> I right. have a little bit, a little bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. You got, you got, you know how to be tight passive, which is great in a tournament sometimes. Yeah. The Germans will teach you how to be mathematical and precise, and the Spaniards mm -hmm. will teach you how to go bananas. That's fantastic. Uh -huh. You're a well rounded yeah. poker player. Exactly. I cover all yeah. everything. <laughs> what, what's the rest of the world's perception of the British poker players? Uh, I've actually even thought about it. Uh, I'm not too sure because there's very different styles in, in the UK, you know? I, I think there is a lot of different styles. Yeah, there weren't really any British players when I was playing. There was me, Ben, Stevie Chidwick, and Mormon. Then, yeah, he was kind of before me. I I never yeah. really got to play against him too much. Mm -hmm. And then, um, maybe Steve O'Dwyer. He's kind of he's kind of British, kind of not. Well, uh, Steve O'Dwyer isn't he more on the American side? I know he's uh, Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, was like part, he hangs out with the Americans for sure. He was part of my crew, like when when I was part of the American crew. So yeah. I, I grew I grew up with with Stevie with Steve, Steve O'Dwyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, it, I think I think the general consensus for English poker players is that there just weren't many good ones. And then Ben and I came into the scene where like, there was a couple of us still, but just, just not too many. Uh, yeah. So maybe <laughs> we've got to find some more good English poker players. <laughs> what do you, what do you, uh, what do you, what do you do to prepare for your, for your sessions these days? You're 15 years in, you, you've got a lot of experience. Like what, what's your, what's your prep before a tournament? Okay, so I mean, a lot of things have changed along the uh, along the years. Like back in the days, uh, I was a bit of a deacon, you know. It was more like wake up, go play. Walk, wake up, open yeah, the yeah, computer. Yeah. Like with my coffee, good. just computer. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, as I get older, like I think my energy has suffered, and like also like a bit my health as well, you know. So I focus a lot in like what what I eat. Now I work out. I didn't used to work out a lot. Now I I, I work out. I, did, I I started with yoga, but now I'm going a bit into stronger workouts just to build like strength. For example, like for my back, you know, because grinding online like really hurts my back. So yeah, me too, man. Uh, yeah, it's, it's tough. And and also like a meditation. Meditation has been key for me. Like uh, uh, you started... meditate. You're talking my language now. What what kind of meditation we talking? Yeah. I mean, I started in 2013. My problem with meditation, and this is, I actually have a 30-day meditation challenge running in Instagram. 
because my biggest problem with everything is consistency because I travel so much and I have so much going on that consistency is really tough. Actually, the only reason why I'm working out good in the past two years is because I got a personal trainer and I'm committed, you know, <laughs> otherwise I don't know if I will make it. But meditation, yeah, meditation, um, I, I actually like to change up a, bit, a lot, you know, it depends, it depends how I'm feeling because, you know, you know, sometimes like when you're feeling really good, like you're meditating really good, you know, so like you can like, I mean, I've had sessions of one hour long sessions, like just like being there, like no apps, nothing, just like taking it in and like accepting everything. So uh, that's my favorite, but that, that doesn't always happen, you know, like sometimes you just have to like do breathing meditation or like sometimes I also like to listen to some music, like, but like very soft music and just like focus on the music. So it depends the kind of mantra that I'm feeling. And and when I'm like, I'm very, and when I'm having uh, tough times, like tough times in, in the sense, like I'm very stressed out or something, that's when actually we reject meditation the most. When we most need it is when we most reject it, which is... Yeah. It, yeah, it's surprising so, for me. Meditation is the one thing that I keep stable now. Everything else can drop, like my foods, habits. It's not that you know, healthy. I'll just stop eating sometimes if I get stressed, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'll I'll wake up and look at my phone sometimes if I if I'm in a bad place, or I'll stop exercising or something. Meditation for some reason, it, and I, I I think it's more because I've gotten to the point where I have so many meditations that I can choose from that when I'm feeling like shit there's a part of me that's just like, okay, that one's going to help me feel a little less. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what I, well, that's what I meant. Like, it, it's not that I have a normal routine of one. It's like, depends how I'm feeling, depends in the spot I am. Um, and yeah, yeah, it, it depends. Also, like sometimes, like if, if I'm like running around or whatever, and I don't have time or anything, time, you know, yeah, you, yeah, always, yeah. you always have time. But like, mm -hmm. if, if life gets too busy, like I do try to do, some kind of mindfulness like when i'm eating like when i'm showering or things like that like i always try to stay present so i'm not doing the meditation routine but i still apply it in my life as much as possible yeah i'm curious how like you said you're you were kind of a dj and i i was too and that suited me at the time because i was so emotionless that i could ruin my body with drugs and but I was taking a lot of stuff, you know, I was taking a lot of, a lot of brain enhancing substances <laughs> and uh, including, including a, a shit ton of coffee. Like uh, uh -huh. I, I remember ha being on an EPT and the first day it would be me, Ben and I would have like one coffee each and then we'd find one of us a final table. So we'd both stay up. And of course you've got to be uh, in a high cognizant pattern when you're in a final table. So you've got to take a mm -hmm. double espresso at, at minimum or whatever <laughs> it is. And then the next day you have to have like six. And then by the end, you're just like dying. Yeah. In like like yeah. your joy is like this, your body is super <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, like, ready. I'm, I'm fine. Ready. <laughs> I'm just playing my game. Yeah. I'm curious as, as you were, you know, obviously a more emotional person, how, how did that, how did that? Cause to me, those two things just can't go together. No, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I guess like I know how to take a lot of like tension in the body. <laughs> I, I, I really know how to take it. I try to do I try to do massages like one once a week, like because I really like I'm tense like yee, all the time. <laughs> and, and I try to reduce the co coffee amount. I, I'm drinking not a lot these days, like maybe like one to two cups per day. But like yeah, back in the days it was like five coffees a day, you know, and yeah, yeah, always yeah. tense, always tense. You're Spanish, you're allowed to drink coffee. I can't I can't get away with it. English coffee makes me feel like crap. I, coffee, coffee in general just makes me and I, I honestly think it's mostly because I abused it. I abused caffeine and speed and things like this so much in the past. There's uh -huh. something going on with my dopamine receptors that are just like not okay when I drink coffee. I mean, it is quite possible. It is quite possible. I've been watching a lot of podcasts about like dopamine, dopamine, and yeah, you get it fucked up. Like yeah, it's like yeah, it's yeah. tough to recover it. It's tough to, it's tough to recover it. So I mean, you you can improve it, but like uh, the big question is like if you ever get it pulled back, you know. So it is. I think meditation helps for this though. All right. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. Who yeah. who who have been the kindest people to you in the poker world kindest world. yeah kindest i mean ben ben benji i didn't know you guys uh, were close yeah i love ben he's like such an inspiration for me he's uh 
I appreciate so much like the time he spends with me and like everything I think mean, how how he explains everything to me like he he wants to study with me sometimes like I yeah I mean I mean he's just being super nice to me you know and yeah. And yeah, I, I want to be just clear for people watching this guy. This guy's called Ben Heath. He's the guy that mm -hmm. I, I kind of worked my way up in the poke world with. I, I didn't know you guys were, were close. Or, yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, give, give me your yeah. full assessment of Ben's poker game. I don't know. I think he's great. I think he's great. Yeah. He I, 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 I personally think I, I think he might be on his way to being the best in the world. I 100% I agree. I 100% agree. He puts so much work and the way he he sees the game and like the detail he he analyzes everything like it's, it's so amazing. Like it's so amazing. Uh he should be way more recognized than he is I I think. Yeah, his problem is his mental mental game. Uh, at least it was when when he and I were close. Uh like there there were so many times where he'll be super deep in a tournament. And he, he knows he's the best player at the table and he knows that he's he's able to crush it. But there'll just be like a decision point where he would take the more fearful route uh, for the lower variance approach. Whereas you might have like Dara San Martino, who was a lot less theoretically sound, but was just ballistic and went crazy in those those spots. Uh, I don't know how he is now, um, but yeah, I, I really think that if if something in his mindset changed, I think he's he's the best boat because like I, I come from a mathematical background, so like I was uh -huh. going to be a mathematician, a, a, a theoretical physicist, or something like that. My mathematical in, intuition and intellect next to Ben's is is nothing. Like his, his brain is so sharp; it's unreal. It's it, it's so impressive, and uh, yeah, his intuition for the game. Like he he spent seven years learning poker with me, so he's got that exploit side, and now he's he's spent loads of years um, learning the the mathematical side of it as well. And he's just like so so well rounded. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. And I mean, I'm not so sure about his mental right now, but like, I don't think he's having these problems anymore. Okay, that's, that's great. I don't think, I don't think so. But but I don't know so for sure, no, but uh, I don't know. I just think he's amazing. Like, I, I just love asking him questions about poker. Yeah, yeah, it's like, yeah. it changes the way I think so much. Yeah. It's yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who have been the, the least... Maybe maybe I shouldn't ask this, but would you want would you answer who had been the the least kind of people in in the poker world? Maybe not a specific person if you don't want to say, but maybe a, a, something that's happened. Okay, um, I would say like back in the days, and eh? not anymore. Back in the days, like when I first started, when I first came out, came up, um, the Spaniards were talking a lot of shit to me in on Twitter, especially like, but in general, in general, yo. I just sorry to interrupt. I uh, I'll get back to that. Say I just saw Prolad Freeman make a tweet, and I saw Spanish Twitter attack him, and they are ruthless. <laughs> yeah. They don't take prisoners. Sorry, what yeah. happened to you? No, no, yeah. I mean, I mean, I guess it, it was like. I mean, I hate to say this, but like maybe because I, I was a girl, you know. It's like when you're a girl, you're a target. It's like why is she there? Like oh, she's yeah, just yeah, here, yeah. like looking pretty and like getting lucky. You know, it's yeah, like okay, yeah. sure, sure. I've been grinding more than you, but sure, I'm just here getting pretty and lucky. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, that like if I have a negative side of poker, like back in the days, not anymore, not anymore. This was like ten years ago or something like that. Um. And yeah, I think like when when I was a when I became a team uh, stars team pro poker stars, like I I was getting so many critics every time I had some score, every time like I had an interview, like she doesn't know how to speak Spanish, she doesn't know what this, she, <laughs> you know, because because I went like I went to school in America, so um, well university. But most of like, half of well now most of my life I've been speaking English, so my Spanish is not so great. I mean, it's it's my first language, but it's it sounds a bit weird sometimes, you know. And I don't know, they just had a lot of critics on me, and I I think it's the the girl part. I think it's the girl part. I think if I was a a guy, like they wouldn't be saying these things. They would be more like, oh, who is he? Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and with a girl, it's like, why is she here? Like. So yeah, I don't like to to say so much about like the difference between girls and guys in in poker because I think it's very relative and it's I haven't had like super bad experiences with it. Like I know a lot of girls have, me personally not. 
Like I've been always cool with everybody. You, but seem, yeah, you but... seem like somebody that could hold hold their own in a social circumstance. Like it feels like you'd be able to set quite strong boundaries. Whereas like a lot of female friends that I have in poker, that that they're, they're a little bit more passive in the way that they approach things, which I think makes them an e easier target. That'd be yeah, it's, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, I I can be a real bitch. <laughs> yeah, you've got to have that bitchy side, and that's something I realize as well with the poker community is that. Yeah, I, I've been a huge target of so much, so much hate and criticism and things like this. Whenever, whenever I get a good score, whenever I put that, there's genuinely tens of thousands of people that just hope that I suck at poker and I, I'll see it all day, every day. And I realize that most of the time it's better to just fly above it. Sometimes yeah. you got to be a bitch. Or <laughs> yeah. <or> <laughs> yeah no for sure i mean yeah i mean I, I mean i'm very friendly like i'm a very social person and i like to make friends and i like i i don't like drama and i like to be chill with everybody so i think for the most part like i'm okay with people but like yeah like if you start annoying me like either i erase you from my view or like you're gonna get talked back. <laughs> <laughs> i love it man i love it so if you're if you were to look at the poker world like what what do you think would be a good change for it to make like how do you think the poker world could be a better community in general i think they should all meditate <laughs> <laughs> Dude, imagine if everyone was just meditating on breaks instead of just going out and talking hand history imagine how nice that atmosphere would be yeah i i've done it like i sometimes i hide in the bathroom like so nobody talks to me and i just meditate in the bathroom by myself <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, me too. I, I hide in so many different, like in a in a tiny corner. I put my headphones on. There'll still be someone going up to you, be like, "Hi, hi." <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. And I, I, I think we're moving towards a time where meditation in public is going to be a lot more normalized. Yeah, so I don't see it too much, but I think I think we're moving in that direction. Like, there are yeah, I mean. People. Yeah, I mean, I feel I, you even see it in, in a lot of tournaments, like in the breaks that you see some people are like going to their corner and just like sitting there. So, I, yeah, I mean, I, when I was in Triton, I was doing it also in, in like my corner next to the room. And like, it's kind of weird because sometimes you can feel like the people getting close to me and looking at Oh, you can me. literally, eyes closed, yeah. you still feel every time. Yeah, like, yeah so it's like... <laughs> You're like so connected alone. to the universe. You're like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah, leave me alone, please. <laughs> I'm yeah. yeah. So you went to you went to Triton. What were you playing? Uh, well, Triton was super special for me because it was my first 50k. I play I play 15, 25, 20, 30, and then the 50k. And the 50k is my first big jump because oh, yeah. uh, I've been playing. I've been I played a lot of 25k's uh, up, up till the day, but like I had never played a 25k. And like my biggest dream is to like reach high stakes. You know, I, I annoy Ben all the time about this. <laughs> 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 like, it's my, my biggest goals, you know. So, yeah. I mean, a, a part of me feels like I should already be there, you know. But I don't know. Life happens, you know. And I had like a, a big stop in my career, and like I had to. It was a bad moment to like stop because it's when all the solver studying and everything came so uh yeah, yeah i set myself back a bit so okay poker got weird over there so i guess it was maybe like six years ago yeah yeah it was like 2015 2016 yeah, 2017 yeah. yeah like those timings like i i had a bit of a downswing mentally it was, like it was like uh, overnight poker got weird it's not like people got better but it's like overnight people changed the way they thought about poker and I remember Ben and I used to have this thing, we called it the anti-GTO strategy for a very long time. And obviously, you know, there's there's a lot of value to these to these solvers yeah. and things like this. But when it first came out, everyone's strategy was just like, oh, I've got I've got a good blocker, I should call any size. So our anti-GTO strategy was like, get the nuts and just value bet like 20x pot. <laughs> like something like that. <laughs> and there'd be some guy there just being like, well, I've blocked the Queen Jack. Well, what am I going to do? Here's my chips. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. yeah, I think being in poker during that time was really, really valuable. So what, mm -hmm. what was it that, that took you out? Burnout. It was burnout. Um, I mean, since I started playing, I was playing nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Like I was playing online a bunch. I was playing live a bunch. And when I was playing live, I was also playing online. <laughs> it was like, yeah. it was my dad was like, you know, you're the only person that doesn't have breaks. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> There's tournaments I have to play, you know. So, yeah. and I was traveling a lot, and 
I don't know. I just hit burnout. Uh, actually, it, it really sucked because it, I was at the peak. Like it was, I was having my best, my best year. Um, uh, it was 2013. I was, I was having my best course, my best year. 2014, I started. I played my first 25k. Uh, everything was going like right on track, and suddenly, like I started getting sick and everything was getting really tough. Like my energy levels were through the floor, like just, uh, I don't know, just uh, a bunch of issues with my body. And at some point, like I just exploded basically. So, and I had to take, uh, I mean, I never, I never left poker, but like I slowed down a lot of my grind and I started focusing a lot in my health until I recovered. And then once I recovered, I came back and then all good. But I, I miss like important years of my career, like for advancing. So I do feel like I'm chasing a little bit those years still. Yeah. Is there a part of you that wants to be like one of the best in the world? Uh, I don't like comparing myself to others. So I don't, I don't strive to be the best of, 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 in the world. I strive to be the best version of myself. And yes, I want to, I want to be the best player I can. Mm -hmm. And I do like, for example, like I want to play high stakes and high rollers and everything because I, I, I love the competition of the game, not against the people, you know, I really love like pushing myself to the limits to play in the toughest environment. I mean, I know this is not good for EV and like money, but, <laughs> it, but for me, it's like, it's a challenge to myself. Like just like playing against the best makes me really push myself like harder, you know? And that makes me improve in my in, by, in myself, you know? So I don't strive to be the number one poker player in the world. I just want to be there with the best and would be part of them. So I want to be the best amongst, not not the best, but I want to be part of, of the best, you know? If that makes sense. No, it really does. I, I'm definitely a little bit, differently wired at least i was when i was playing uh full time like i i wanted to be the best in the world and i it was pure ego you know it was like dead yeah. definitely competitive masculine ego drive let's try and crush everybody and in some ways it was a huge gift and i i really do think having a powerful ego a strong ego is one of the most important things in poker it's just you can't be inside of it when you're making a decision you know, you have to have yeah. that element of you that's a beast, that's a monster. It's like, I want to crush that person, but you can't be making your decision from that energy because then you'll be like, I just need to win this pot instead of. Yeah. Winning. Yeah. No, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've had my ego too. I've had my ego too many years, you know? Mm, I don't know. Maybe, maybe because of that dent in my career, like it's what made me feel like, Maybe it's a little bit of low self low self confidence, you know, because that then may, makes me feel like because I'm behind, like I cannot compare myself to the best. Mm -hmm. But that is something that I'm working on with like mindset coaches, <laughs> because because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be like that. Um, uh, I think I think I should have more confidence in myself. So, but but yeah, but back in the days I was like very competitive, like in terms of like I wanna be. I mean, I was ranked in the, in the GPI number one player. Uh, it was I was first for two years in a row. And that time actually, uh, and I was like, I was almost first female in the world. But uh, Vanessa Sells was just kept binking. Oh, go down, go down, Vanessa, man. She trusts. She I know. I, I was I was a hundred points behind her to catch oh. me being number one. She just yeah. kept sweating me in every in every <laughs> in, in every bubble, you know, to see if I'm yeah. mastered or not, you know. Down, but Vanessa. and to be honest, like it was so stressful. Like it, this is part of like I mean, I was it was 2012, 2013, you know, and like that's part of my burnout because a lot of of, of it was the pre the extra pressure of gaining points, you know, and it's like yeah. for what? Like for what? Who am I? I don't know. For what? I don't. I don't know. So that part of me has changed. Like I, I don't, I don't have that ego in that those terms anymore. And now, now I just challenge myself. I, I fight against myself. You know, and that's it. Do you, do you have that part of you that's a, when you're in a pot, you just want to destroy the other person? No, 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 not anymore. <laughs> I used to. I used to. Not anymore. <laughs> 
Do you, do you feel like that influences the way that you play? Yeah, yeah, because like because now it's more like I'm just solving puzzles. Like it doesn't matter who is at the other end, you know. I mean, it matters in terms of like how they perceive me and how they can play against me. But it, that's just another piece of the puzzle. Like I don't, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I think do, it's do you just take into puzzle. account the psychology of the game much, or are you more of a hardcore mathematical? No, I think. Uh, I think, I mean, I'm for sure not hardcore mathematical and psychology and psychology for sure. I, I agree it's there. So, but I think a bit of, of everything, to be honest, it's just, uh, I mix a bit of everything. I don't know. It's, I do like to look at cells and all this stuff, but I also don't rely only on them, but I just try to pick pieces from everything. Mm. For me, for me, it's, I've, I, it might be different for you, but for me, it's really important that when I'm, when I'm playing, I, I want to crush the other person and it's not <laughs> from a place of like wanting to hurt them or anything, but it's, it's, there's like a certain flow state that I'll get into where it's like, I'm, I'm the level above the person I play against, whoever it is, you know, and obviously it doesn't always work out like that, but when I'm in that state and I'm, I'm like here and they're here, that's where everything just aligns perfectly. Oh, they chose that size because this portion of their range wants to do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to be, make sure I'm here. And yeah, it's, it's one of the biggest things that I teach my students is like, there are so many hugely talented poker players out there that I feel like don't quite make it to the place that they could be. And from what I see, one of the largest reasons is that they just don't have that that almost like sociopathic element of wanting to just take every last penny from that, that letting that beast out inside of them because that that's the point. Like poker is such a predatory game in a sense, like such a, a zero sum game. And there, in my opinion, at least, there's a human element that is meant to really flourish within within poker if you're playing ultimately which is to to compete and to to really drive your opponent it's like you're at war with a person yeah it's kind of curious because actually like i always think i'm not a competitive person but i'm actually super competitive you know? yeah. <laughs> like, super competitive. it's like i don't know it's like um i don't know maybe it's because the pressure I try to avoid it these days uh, because I try to live with more peace but oh man I'm mega competitive you know it's like mm. I, I like I, I'm not allowed to play any games in my house you know it's like, <laughs> like r risk is a no go risk, oh risk play. risk is such a good game I I, I know I love it I love it <laughs> but it's insane like you know it's like like I've got it oh my god I've got in such weird spots with friends and everything like because <laughs> I, I because obviously like we tend to like poker players tend to win in all these uh, games yeah. you know and like we also don't take it light we just go for it you know so it's like a yeah. lot of tension in the in the house <laughs> i just had a funny memory of playing risk whilst i was on lsd with ben <laughs> <laughs> i completely forgot about that and we had to give up after like half an hour we're in jersey in some like five-star hotel and we had to give up on it because all the colors started looking gray. <laughs> like we, we can't play anymore. We're just playing gray against gray. Uh, oh my God, that's too funny. <laughs> but so, something, something that Ben, ben and I taught each other really powerfully is that, so we, we used to be in the mindset that everything was a game and we were both very emotionally detached and it, it worked for us. Like we would, you know, one of us would lose like a 100k tournament that was like huge for our bankroll. And the other one, which was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we just laugh at each other for it. You know, if something bad in life would happen, like he'd, he'd, we'd go through a heartbreak. The other one just like, you know, it wouldn't be mean, but it's like, ah, come on, we'll just like make a joke about it. And so yeah. whenever we were playing poker, we brought that energy into it. And it's like, we were still hyper competitive. But if we lost, it was like, whatever, man, like it was just la laughing it off. And it, yeah, it was, it was never, it was never mean. And I, something that, yeah, I'm really, really grateful for those times because we took it to such an extreme that yeah. it's, it's still in me now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with poker, with poker, like if you're an emotional person and you don't, can't do that, there's like ways to, to deal with it, you know, because in reality, like 
if you're like if you have bankroll management like busting tournaments shouldn't affect you at all like it's just how it is like yeah you get so used to it you know so if it's not affecting your bankroll then it's like okay on to the next one on to the next one i don't know if and and with the emotions is like for me like the way i see it is just like yeah i do what i have to do like it's uh it's, it's again it's like a, a, a puzzle you know so i'm like playing the puzzle and everything but yeah it's certainly an advantage if you're like if you don't have so many emotions yeah. i definitely I, I definitely have a lot of emotions now and i i'm struggling <laughs> maybe not right now but even a few weeks ago so i, I was doing i was doing this i'm doing this bankroll challenge at the moment where i'm turning 500 dollars mm -hmm. into 100k online just uh-huh so I've got to be at home right now because I just had a kid. So I'm doing <laughs> online content right now. Hi, by the way, congratulations on your kids. So, so sweet. Yeah, so sweet. yeah. She's one one month old today. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's so sweet. It's so special. Uh, so I I put out, I told people I was doing this challenge, and uh, a lot of people got really aggressive towards me about it, and I, you know it, was, it it turned into a lot a lot of kind of like dick swinging ego contests, and I got my I got caught up in. It. You know, and, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, if you're a very sensitive person, you can get caught up in, in, in these things. And it's not like I was heavily going and speaking online about it, but it came into my play. And I, I went from, I won like 12 sessions in a row before that. And then I lost the next five. And I realized that every pot that I was losing, it wasn't just that I was losing whatever money was, because the money's irrelevant to me. Uh -huh. that these days. It was that I was identifying with the person that can crush these stakes and every pot that I lost, like attacked that identity. And even though I've been through these things like dozens of times now, it, it still just like creeps up in ways that you're not expecting. Yes. 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 Yeah. That sucks. I mean, that sucks, but you learn from it, I guess. Yeah. I'm grateful it's for a good, it. Yeah. yeah it's, a good, it's a good exercise to like learn yeah. from it. I mean, we're not, we're not Buddhist monks, you know, like, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I mean, we try to do our best, but like, yeah. it's impossible to completely be accepting of everything and not have like, not react to the emotions, you know, it's just like, you have to meditate a lot, a lot yeah. to accomplish even a small piece of that. So have you spent any time with Buddhist monks or Hindu monks or anything like that? No, 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 no. I've spent a lot of time with them recently then. Oh, nice. Some wild, some wild stuff out there. I really, I really feel like a lot of it's lacking some spice. I feel like for some, something I'm sure you'd be really good at is like convincing the average person that meditation is good. Cause you need, you need, you need a sense of humor behind it. You need like, oh, this is really fun. This is really effective. This is really whatever. And I, mm -hmm. I have felt that's kind of lacking, like in the marketing department of Buddhism or something, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to sell it I, to the world very well. Yeah, I'm trying to do it because I really think it's the most positive thing for, for everyone. Like, uh, not only for your own game, for your own life, uh, for your own relationships, it's also like, you spread that into the world you know and like if everybody does the same thing like everybody will be more chill so i think it's important i think it's really important and like i don't know when i started this but when i started the challenge for because we didn't talk about it but i ACR has a, a 100k challenge to go to triton i and keep seeing this around tell, tell me about that please because I, I keep okay. seeing streamers just win 100k somehow i don't know what's going on yeah okay so basically like we and all the team pros from acr uh, are competing uh, against, against each other to win uh there's two packages 200k packages we also have satellites running like for it so we there's like 100k uh, pack, uh, 100k package satellites on acr like mm -hmm. in the next two weeks or so um so we're all competing against each other to win these two packages um and it's a competition that it has different parts it's a great idea because it's a way uh, for for the comp company to push us to be better team pros you know so okay the most variant one is the the heads up we have a heads up against each other we have a bracket and then so i'm playing that tomorrow so that's why i say i had two heads up oh, running. Shit. Who, who are you playing bosky it's my it's the first, third time i play bosky yeah <laughs> i always hit bosky but yeah <laughs> but Bosky, then and then like that's the heads up. Then we have tournament points. So we have um, online and live. Uh, we have like this kind of multiplier that like we 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 score and like we pick our best ten scores. I think so. 
that's another part. Then we have uh, influence in poker. So uh, what we're doing right now will be part of that, that influence, you know, like podcast interviews, uh, contributing to the poker community in some way. Um, so influence. And then the, the last part is um, the one that has been the real challenge for me, which is increasing social media numbers and quality of content. I'm not a huge That's social tough. media. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a huge social media person because uh, I am very, I'm, I'm a quite present person. Like I'm the type mm. of person that I can lose my phone 24 hours and I don't even know it. I just realized, I, do, you, do you mean Jeff Bosky? The, the, the other, is he another one of the street? Oh, okay. Okay. I recently found, I recently found his content. I like his content. Yeah. You got yeah. a good competition there. Yeah. Yeah. I have great competition, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm one of the worst in like social media, like in my team for sure, you know, cause yeah, I'm like very present. I've always been, I'm always in my own world. Like I just want to play poker, man. I want to study and play poker. Like, <laughs> is there, is there a part of you that's like, that you have the girl cards there and for social media, obviously that can be quite a better. Have you ever used that to your advantage or being tempted to or anything like that? Wait, what do you mean? I don't understand. So like, uh, it, I, I would, I would say at least it, it seems to be, there are a lot of strategies that girls could kind of fall into to, to oh, kind okay. of find a larger amount. I don't mean like thirst traps or anything like that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean more just like, I guess playing on, on aesthetics more like being a beautiful woman is probably something you could kind of play up on a little bit, not something. No, you could, no, I personally, mean, I, personally, I, I don't, I don't like that energy at all. No, I mean, everybody tells me I should, and I'm like, why? Like, I don't know. I mean, it's like, I, I, I'm here because of my accomplishments and my work and my game. Like, I, I mean, okay, I'm cute. Sure, good good, good for me, you know? Okay. <laughs> oh, well played. <laughs> yeah, well played, you know? <laughs> it's like, I'm also not like mega hot or whatever, you know? It's like, I'm just fucking cute, okay? So whatever. <laughs> uh, but but no, I mean, I, people, I get a lot of shit because I, I don't do well with my social media, you know? I don't, everybody always tells me, you don't sell yourself good, your brand and all this stuff. And I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I do what I love to do, which is play poker. I just want to be the best in poker. That it is true though that I am I I've had the luck and also partly because I'm a female that has a stand out. Um, I mean, a lot of people say just because you're a, a girl you get like uh, sponsored, but I also stood st stood up, you know, like uh, in in the game. So uh, it's true that like being a, an ambassador, a team pro from from a sponsorship, like I do have a duty of like selling the brand basically you know and being representing the band the brand so uh, do you do, the, so you, you stream you stream regularly right no you, do you not how, how do you how are you doing this acr thing how are you gaining your numbers and yeah i'm posting reels every day <laughs> oh okay we, we instagramming it uh the what is it I, I this one I mean, I'm, I'm probably gonna find a little a cool piece of it and make a reel of it, something, uh, <laughs> something like that, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know. I just like, I mean, basically, like every, everything that is on my on my social media, it's organic. Like, uh, I'm so thankful for everybody that follows me and supports me. You know, like without me, basically doing not much. Like, uh, but but I I understand that, that 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 that's not good. I have to be better. You know, I, because it's my responsibility. So the part of the challenge that I'm actually taking most serious is this social media part because it's something that I need to learn to do and I, it's something that I need to do on the regular and I need to be consistent. That doesn't mean that I'm going to change my whole personality and become into this like social media person, you know, yeah, yeah. but but I have I, I really took it very serious this month to put give my 120 percent in this uh, subject and do the best I can and learn as much as possible because I understand the importance of it. Yeah. That's something that I I've always struggled with it. I, I, yeah. I started my YouTube channel without even thinking about it. And I, <laughs> I spent the first like four years of streaming in YouTube. I didn't know how to do thumbnails. I didn't know how to do titles. I, I, my setup was so bad, like aesthetically so bad. I just wanted to play. And I, yeah. I found the importance of having a team around me that will just do all the stuff that I can't or don't want to do. Um, and it, it obviously depends like what, what level of, of 
you know, money you want to put into it and, you know, what kind of business it is. But mm -hmm. yeah, for me, I, I, I realized that I'm just not, I'm just not the tech guy. I'm just, that's not in this lifetime. I don't know about the next one in this lifetime. I'm just not the guy that's going to be sitting there editing videos. So yeah, having me people neither. around me that can do that is, is, is really important. Me neither, me neither. Uh, I mean, I've thought about this many times. The only thing is that, I don't know, it's like, I feel like a lot I can learn in myself and I'm actually learning it. Like I got this app that like uh, cut clips and like put captions <laughs> and all this stuff, you know? So, I mean, I'm learning, so I don't know if I want to like invest on it or look for a team yet, but it's probably a good idea that at some point I do because like what I'm doing, like this month, like has been all about the challenge. Like, to be honest, like I, I haven't studied much. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I feel so horrible you know about it like I like I don't know because like pre-triton I was like hardcore studying every day you know and like now it's like I one month that like I'm I'm moving apartments like I'm have the challenge running I have heads up I have a I have to play like AC attorneys like I don't know Podca it's, podcasts to go on podcast is yeah. like i ha i have a lot a lot going on you know so like my studying not so much this month and i'm not happy about it i'm not happy like i was i was considering going to to try on cypress again uh, but i don't know i don't have, you, have you looked at jeff uh, boski's uh, game and have you tried to understand his his flaws and weaknesses yeah i mean i, I review his heads up a couple of times so Feeling confident? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no trash talk? All right, fine. That's fine. No, I'm nice, you know, I'm nice. I don't that, that's, the, that's the secret to getting numbers on social media, by the way. It's something that I've not done in my career, but it's just trash talk and drama. And uh, yeah, when it, whenever whenever people start saying anything inflammatory, then the numbers just skyrocket. <laughs> yeah. It's terrible, terrible yeah. world we live in. I don't know. I don't know if I want to be more like that or not. The thing is, like, I avoid the stress of the drama, you know, because I just don't want stress in my life. Like, my life is super stressful already, you yeah, know. And yeah, like, yeah, like about, and and I yeah. and I lived that. I lived that uh, these years that I told you about, you know. Like, I lived the stress of like people firing at me, like because I was doing good, and I do not enjoy it. So I just try to stay my side and like, whatever, you know. Like, I mean, maybe. In private, I trust them. <laughs> as soon as we start recording, like Jeff Boski's three betting strategies, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm cocky. I'm definitely cocky. I'm for sure cocky, you know? Yeah. But not publicly. I try to keep a good image. <laughs> <laughs> one, one may argue that's inauthentic. It is inauthentic. No, I mean, no, to be honest, like, to be honest, like, one thing that I, I believe is that I, I am an example for a lot of people. Like, especially female players, you know, and I've actually tried to like help the the female community as much as possible, but like because of time, like I I haven't been able to do as much as I want to do. And at one point, like that, I was going around a lot. I thought, like, how can I help them the best? And I just thought, like, being an example is the best way I can do it. So like everything I show uh, in 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 the public. It's my best version because I want people to look at that. Like they have to aim high, you know? Obviously, like I, I'm not scared of saying like, yeah, I did hit burnt out. Uh, I, I do have problem with consistency. Well, that's why I'm doing this challenge. Like I, I am a human and like, obviously like everything, like everything, the, how I've dealt with the Instagram that I've been doing, I've been putting like the things that I'm working on to be the better player. I am no expert in any of them. And I think I leave, I leave it quite clear. Like I'm working on this stuff, but I want people to, to strive to be their best. And like, this is what I, I try to do all the time. Obviously I'm cocky and I get filtered and I have bad things of myself, but like, why do I want to show that to people? You know, like, I mean, I show it in person. I, like in, in a tournament, you'll see me. I'm very, I'm a very real person. Like, in fact, it's a problem sometimes to be too real. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm with you. It's, it's important to, it, it's a weird balancing act because you, you know, that on one end of the spectrum, there's like the Instagram life where people will just be like, everything's perfect. And on the other end, there's just people being triggered all the time and, and just being an asshole, yeah. uh, letting all of their worst sides out on social media. And that there is a balance, but it's probably nearer this end that you probably do want to 
say like, hey, this is something I'm struggling with. This is something that sucks in my life. This is whatever, but not be the kind of person that's like, oh, I'm feeling like shit. So I'm going to go online and record myself feeling like shit and tell someone else they should be feeling like whatever, it, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's what you promote. I mean, like the the way that I'm trying to do this social media is just being myself, you know. Like, and I am as real as possible. Like, I I mean, I am real. I I tell you what I think. I, I, the things that I'm doing on Instagram is the things that I'm actually doing. You know, I'm not making it up. Um, I actually posted a, a reel on like Insta fails, you know, because like the way that I mess up how I how I'm like doing the Insta Instagram because I think yeah. it's funny, you know. But but I don't know. But for example, just a simple example, you know, like I decided uh, a couple of months or a year ago or something like that that I don't want to show alcohol in my in my social media. I like back like back back back. Uh, I used to like post like the cups or like you know the typical like <laughs> restaurant the yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah like and and then i thought like why do i want to be in like promoting this i mean it's not my it's not my proudest part of myself and i'm actually trying not to drink too much i think it's like quite bad for your body so it's like why do I want to be uh, portraying this? Like, it's just a bad example. Like, I don't know how all the people are, are looking at my stuff. Um, I don't know if if there's like 20 year olds or something like that, or 20 years, like, uh, yes, that age or something. Like, it's better that they start getting healthy now, you know? Like, don't wait till you're like 30 something and like, you're all fucked up already. <laughs> I, I can attest to that. That is also a good strategy. <laughs> don't get fucked up early just because you can. Uh, yeah pay for it for sure mm -hmm. yeah i i don't i don't drink at the moment i've drank like once or twice in the last year or so but that's, that's good yeah no i'm, I'm I, I didn't honestly didn't even mean to like i didn't mean to stop drinking it's just there's a certain point especially through meditation there's, there's a certain point where sobriety starts feeling better than being drunk no for so, sure 100 so it's like well it's a negative free will at this point yeah, no, for sure. I like me and drinking. Like I've never been a, a big drinker either. But I mean, most of my career, I haven't. I drank a lot in university. Then when I started playing poker, I stopped drinking almost at all. Uh, not like maybe in the poker stars party, I used to like drink a, a couple of things. You know? <laughs> yeah. but that, that was my woo of the month. You Probably know? some wild videos of you out there. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, I, as I said, I was like grinding so much and it wasn't on, on my, I, it, it didn't hit me, you know. But actually, quarantine messed me up a bit because I developed a bit of a stupid habit of having a glass of wine at night. And it's really tilting me because I'm still doing it and I don't want to do it <laughs> because it's so stupid. Like it's bad. It's yeah. bad for sleeping. Like you don't sleep good. It's just sugar. It's just like, it's just shit, man. Like I'm fine for what? Why am I doing this? So this why, why, do you, why do you think you started? Like I know quarantine in Spain was particularly bad. Well, I was in Brighton. I was in Brighton. Oh, okay. by my, was, was I was in Brighton by myself. Just like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I started. I had like this, like, whiskey glasses and like run, uh, <laughs> bottles i had a lot of bottles you know like because i didn't drink too much but like from like friends bringing it over the whiskey bottles i i, I won them in a roulette in the casino in aspen you know I, I want a whiskey bottle in the roulette in aspen's casino i, I won five <laughs> i won oh, five are they just giving out whiskey they t it felt like it was a really important moment <laughs> yes, yes. I, 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 I ran really good <laughs> I got five of them. I gave the like, I gave two away, and then suddenly, like, they were in my house, and like, you know, I guess like, <laughs> I don't know I was... what happened. One thing led to another. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was very stupid. I don't know how it started happening. Like, I don't know. Maybe because I Zoom calls with people, and like, oh, whatever, and like, I don't know. It's just, I mean, it's not like I'm a big alcoholic, you know. I just like, I, I, I have a glass of wine a night. But I don't like this habit, and I want to delete it from my from my life. So, yeah. yeah. No, Ben Ben's from Brighton. I assume you know that already. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's how we we got, we got close. Yeah, I I, I, like I went down and visited him a few times, and uh, it's it's uh, it's such a wild place down there. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot a lot of drinking culture, a lot of party culture. During, during so you were there during lockdown. Did you? Uh, yeah, yeah. Would you just like literally living by yourself? You didn't see people. Or... Yeah, 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 yeah. I. Yeah, I mean, actually, it was a great time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I went to Brighton a little before lockdown. So 
I, I, I met up with Ben a couple of times. I had like some Spanish friends there, uh, some American friends there. So I knew some people, but when everything happened, I was completely by myself. So yeah, uh, I was in lockdown by myself most of the time. But for me, it was a break from life, man. Like I was so tired of like traveling, uh, having people around me all the time because I am a social, a very social person. So I always have a lot of like people, people, people. And being alone uh, during this time was a life changing experience, and I loved it. I actually loved it. It was for me. It was really tough. I I was also by myself for a lot of it, and. I, I tend to be a lot more isolated probably than you. Like I, I have my family here, but it sometimes Hannah's like off in America or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I'll spend, I'll spend weeks just like, I'll go out and do stuff and visit like spiritual events or singing or whatever it is. But a lot of the time I just spend here with my animals and mm -hmm. yeah, lockdown, I found really tough. Like I, I was, I was really, really struggling during, during a part of it. And it, I love that. I love the challenge. I love, feeling like shit sometimes I love waking up depressed like okay how are we gonna fix this like a little puzzle uh mm -hmm. yeah lock, lockdown for me was, was, was a wild one were you, were you scared at all during those times were you like worried for about COVID and things like that uh mm, the first month was kind of like strange it was kind of like we were in a movie you know so I yeah. don't know like like I, it was it was strange. I was scared for my family, you know, because I was I was so far away from them that like uh, I was like, oh my god, like I need how how do I do this? Like I I need to be with them. Like this is one of my biggest fears that something happens and I'm not close to my family, you know. And that was like my biggest fear. But then everything got pretty chill. And actually, like in, I mean, in Brighton, everything was chill. Like they were they were allowing us to go take walks and everything on the beach. So. It was it was okay. I don't know, but I really I don't know. For me, it was very positive because I really like had time to stop and do and work on myself. Like I meditated a lot. I built a little gym in my apartment. Like <laughs> I don't know. I was grinding infinite online, like which was amazing because like since I was coming down from a little bit of the burnout before, like I hadn't been grinding so much online in the previous years, and like finally I got my grind back, you know, and that was yeah, great. Yeah. That was great. So, have, you, have you got some like big online scores uh, that you uh, you can uh, tote show off to people? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, okay. So my last biggest score uh, actually was during lockdown. I finished fifth in the scoop main uh, oh, for, oh, for, nice. two, for two seventy or something like that, for okay. two thirty something like that. I don't know. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I have a lot of scores online too. Like I have a scoop uh, win, uh, uh, for two fifty. I have. Remember one K Monday, one K Monday million multi entry. Yeah, vaguely. Full tilt, full tilt. Yeah. It, Before that was my time. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's another two fifty K. Um. Oh, so you, you've been on the heels of this seven figure score for a while, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's this when the scoop main event, I assume, was like uh, seven figures up top, huh? Yeah, it's uh, one million. Yeah. I, 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 like that year, I almost hit the one million dollar score three times. Oh. I bubbled, I bubbled the final table of the millionaire maker, finished third in the party millions. And then the scoop uh, fit. Oh, damn it. So, oh, damn it. That <laughs> arbitrary number. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, but but I do have a lot of nice online scores. So, mm. cool. Yeah, I I uh, I ran so good in my own online tournament career. I don't, looking back, it's, it's genuinely astonishing how how well I ran. Okay, <laughs> at one point, actually, my number one favorite poker me memory. Not that I like the word favorite, but the one that always comes up when people ask that question is winning the as as in, as in Mexico with Ben, right, and. Mm -hmm uh we were both grinding scoop there and i got i got to the final table of the scoop main and the power went out in mexico like every like a third of mexico is just the power is the biggest power cut they'd had in in, in in many many years and ben and i were running rounds mexico looking for a place with internet Connor Dryden was in the same city. He went he, he wow. went to a different city so he could use the internet there we stayed and maybe like an hour before we started, 
the we found a place with internet and it was like really dodgy internet <laughs> and then it would like go out in the middle of the hands and we'd be like hey can you turn the internet back on and they'd be like yeah yeah sure we're just gonna serve these drinks i'm like it's like 60k in the middle but sure you got it, oh it take my time. God. Fine. and we couldn't tell them how much we were playing for because obviously mexico yeah yeah um and then the, that that place the internet just died and I had to run through the Mexican streets in my pajamas whilst Ben stayed in there just to get in the bill. And uh, I was just like go running from restaurant to restaurant looking for somewhere that might have an, in an internet connection. And I found a Starbucks and we took homage in the Starbucks. And uh, yeah, Ben Ben came and joined me and I ended up winning the, the Scoop Main in that Starbucks. And we were just like in our pajamas, just fucking screaming a reaper at each other. So Guys, Mexicans just looking at us like, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening <laughs> yeah oh my god that's so sick that's so funny though it's just, that's so cool but i can't imagine the fucking stress man wow oh yeah, yeah we yeah. loved that e even in those this is the kind of relationship that ben and i had even in that moment where we thought oh we might we might be about to lose like 250k of equity there and he had swapped so you know he had some as well yeah um, it was we were just laughing about it we just didn't care <laughs> You know, it was like whatever man yeah. <laughs> that's a good attitude that's a good attitude yeah. for sure that's yeah. for sure a good attitude do you want to do you want to leave on uh what, what 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 might be your 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 favorite favorite poker memory ever uh i get this this question asked a lot but it's like it's super tough to say which one is my favorite yeah, let, let me mean, let me think of a better question i, I don't like that question either. I don't know why I said that. let me think of a better question What would the best version of you look like in like 10 years? What, 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 how are you different? What makes you different? And how have you grown from now until then? Okay, in 10 years. Uh, 10 years is a long time because uh, I'm 36 years old and 10 years is 46. I'm not sure. I agree. Good maths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just. I'm just. <laughs> I told you I'm not a math person. No, <laughs> no I'm just thinking like it's it's different. It's quite different. Like stage of like I don't know if I if I'll have kids. I don't know how much poker I'm gonna be playing. So, but uh, the best version of myself like for sure i want to be super healthy like i think health is very important um i want to have really good mind good mindset and and 10 years is a long time and like i don't know i probably want to find a bigger purpose you know because um i mean if you tell me five years it, it's like i want to be uh, doing what I'm doing now, now, but like much better, like like way healthier, way more consistent with everything. Um, meditating all the time, like studying all the time, like crushing poker, playing high stakes. Like that's 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 my goal in the next five years. In ten years, things may change because I don't know if I'm gonna have kids. Um, I don't know if it's if if I if in five years I reach my goals, my goals change, you know, and and maybe maybe poker is important, but it's not as important. Maybe I made it to myself in poker. I I decide that I've reached the the what I wanted to reach in poker, and I want to move into something different, you know, not out of the game, but like I do feel like I need to give more back to society somehow and I need to have a higher purpose other than myself. So in the next five years, yes, I see my purpose being my own development. In the next 10 years, I'm hoping my purpose is not just me. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really feel that there's going to be a lot of people that that look to you in 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 those times and we'll see a really good inspiration of a, a person that's doing all the right things so yeah thanks for that I, it's really it's really reassuring for me to meet people that still have that part of them in the back of the in the back of their mind like hey, the the real the real thing here is to find to find purpose beyond myself yeah and i think i think uh, i think having kids children actually give you that a lot um 
but I, I don't know, I'm getting old and like, I am, I mean, I'm a female, you know, I have like a time bank <laughs> there. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> so, you got a few cards left, you, you're good. Yeah, but, time bank chips left. <laughs> but I don't know, it's not my 100% priority. So I don't know if I will. And if I, I don't know, I just want to, I want to, eventually I want to move into something that is bigger than myself. Right now, I'm focused on myself, I'm trying to make it, you know, but. I hope that's not my future. Beautiful. Uh, do you have a, a, a last thing to promote? Do you have a website or is it just Instagram and Twitter? Well, no, only Instagram and Twitter. Oh, I um, follow very, very much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I hope, I hope people are liking my content and like, I'm really open to, to suggestions or, or like uh, criticism or whatever. If you're nice, if you're mean, I just don't read you. So it's fine. But, but like, I, like, I want to use what I have to do for something good, you know? So if, if people are liking my content or they would like to see something different or, or like advice on like how to do things from my own experience and all this stuff, I'm super open to it. So go ahead, guys, ask me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, it was really cool meeting you. Uh, it, again, yeah, just one of one of the people I just seen around being all happy and smiley, and probably been too nervous to say hi back in the day or whatever. So it was, it was really cool. Meeting you. <laughs> same, same. I I really wanted to meet you because, as you say, like we've been in the game and we we haven't really crossed paths yet. So thank you so much for having me on. And, and yeah, super nice. Cool. Peace. Okay. All right. Bye. <laughs>